Uh, another cutting tool that we have available at the Wilson Center is the abrasive cutoff saw. It is for steel only. Uh, when, we, when you use this tool, you'll be using these cam locks to clamp your material. This can miter, which is pretty awesome. It is an abrasive wheel. Uh, so when we cut it, we're only cutting steel. It does create an abrasive dust. Uh, so you need to be wearing a vent or a respirator mask. Uh, the on off switch is here. Uh, when you guys are cutting with this, I don't ever want you to cut any aluminum. It says no aluminum here and no aluminum here. It can gum up the abrasive, uh, which can actually compromise the abrasive solid. It means it could explode. So we don't want that to happen. Um, usually for steel tubing, other people will do other full steel things. Uh, it is loud, we're hearing protection. Any questions, feel free to email me or ask Nick. Let's head back to our spot. These are the pedestal grinders. These are awesome tools, but can potentially be dangerous. Uh, so they are used to be shaping steel only. Uh, this is a coarse wheel. This is a fine wheel uh, that you're going to be grinding away material. So they're both, have both abrasives. When you use this tool, you're going to be on the rest all the time, working back and forth on the face. You're not pressing in super hard. You're doing, doing moderate pressure and letting the stone cut. I don't ever want you to be grinding on the side of the wheel, rounding the edges, jabbing things in. Never wear gloves. Even though the material will get hot, you can use the water bucket here, and the water bucket down there to cool them off, and then just wait while, you, while they cool off. You can see there's a sign that says no aluminum. Uh, if we catch you grinding aluminum in the Wilson Center, it is grounds for immediate and permanent loss of access. So don't do it. If you do, what can happen is the aluminum can melt on the wheel it can get in between these cracks in the stone, and then when it like cools, it will crack the stone. That means when you turn it on, a stone is compromised, it can explode, which could very badly hurt somebody. Whenever you're using this tool, I want you to be using the vacuum. The on-off switch is here. It will pull all the dust and stuff down, which is great. If not, you need to be wearing a respirator mask, and everybody in the area needs to be wearing one as well. The ventilation is also <laughs> hooked up to the disc sander. This sander is also a really cool tool that you can do um, all kinds of fun stuff on. Uh, when you're using this, it spins this direction. I want you to be sanding on the down side. Okay? When you're sanding, you're going to be on the table. You can move in and work back and forth. The outside is more aggressive than the inside. If you put it on this side, as it goes up, it will take your material and throw it, which is a huge problem. You can do other metals like aluminum on the disc sander. Again, put the dust collection system on. It has a very long spin down. So if I turn it on and turn it off, it takes about 20 minutes for it to stop spinning. Uh, do not put your material into it to slow it down. You can hurt the motor, you can rip the paper. Uh, if you have anything with sharp edges, please take the sharp edge off first. All right, let's go look at the other stuff. This is a sandblaster, another awesome tool that you have access to. When you're ready to use it, you're gonna come and you're gonna take your part, you're gonna open the door, and you're gonna place your part in. Okay, I'm gonna leave the door open so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to reach in, put my glove on, find my gun, and when I have my gun, you see there's a nozzle here, that's where the sand particulate's gonna come out of. I wanna have it so I can see what I'm doing and aim appropriately. So when I'm ready, I'll take the gloves back off, I'm gonna shut the door. I'm gonna turn on the switch here. A light will come on. It's still kind of difficult to see, but I can see. I've got my part, I've got the sand. The foot pedal here is what's gonna allow the sand to come out. So I will push on this. 
And then once I'm done, take the gloves off, turn this off, give a second for the dust to settle, and retrieve your part. And then we'll head to the paint booth. And here are the paint booth controls right next to the sandblaster. Uh, we have two controls here. This one is painting high speed. If you're in there painting stuff, I want you to turn this on past two. Uh, it's gonna run, it's gonna create a lot of suction in there so you'll be okay. Uh, when you're done painting, I want you to turn it off. If you want it to sit and cure, uh, curing low speed, you're gonna turn it on past two. It's gonna get about 95 degrees in there and it will help your stuff set up fairly quickly. So. Uh, Please make sure that you set the timer. Uh, if not, tell staff so we can turn it off eventually too. Uh, the rest of the paint booth is this way. This is the entrance to the paint booth. We have just turned it on. So first we wanna turn on the lights. Then I want you to notice a couple things. First, the sign, respirator required, no sanding in the paint booth. Please clean the paint booth and use the vacuum. We also have this paper here, which will help with your cleanup. Do not spray the walls and stuff. There are cups up there as well, and some gloves. And we'll step inside. This is the paint booth. Uh, we are in a downdraft table, or a downdraft room. So the air is coming down and it's going in through these filters. So everything that we're painting is gonna go down into the floor. If I'm gonna be working on something, I don't want to address it like this because it will come back on me. I wanna stand on the other side so it goes down to the table. Please cover things with paper. Either it's the floor, the sawhorses, if you're hanging stuff, we wanna keep this place nice. No sanding ever. And then please, please pick up and clean up after yourselves. Use a vacuum when necessary. Next, we're gonna look at the uh, hazardous waste collection and drop off point. So follow me. This is our hazardous waste area. So you can see we have a flammable cabinet and a corrosive cabinet. If you are going to create some hazardous waste, that is okay. We need to make sure it is disposed of correctly. So we have some resources here for you. We've got a couple bottles. So this is gonna be for uh, liquids. The buckets are gonna be for solids. There is a nice rack here that has a bunch of them. There's also gonna be a label that are attached to that shelf as well. When you do the label, I need you to put the accumulation date. So that is when you're doing it. The chemical makeup. So if it's spray paint, you need to write down what chemical makeup is that spray paint. And then I would like you to put your team name next to my name on the sheet. Put it on here and you're gonna put it in the appropriate cabinet. Now, if you fill this up and you don't put a label on it and the inspector comes through, they can hit us with a hefty fine up to $10,000 depending on the instance and what's happening because they have to treat it as the most dangerous thing. Um, if you have questions, feel free to email me or ask me and staff are always available to help as well. Uh, last we're gonna talk about is first aid and fire safety. So follow me. This is our first aid center. So you can see there's all kinds of goodies to help you out. Uh, there is another one at the uh, solar car station. There's one in the M racing area. And then there is another one in the wet lab. If you get hurt, please help yourself take care of yourself. If you get hurt bad enough to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Staff will help you. We'll call an ambulance for you. We're limited in our first aid, but we'd love to help. 
please take care of yourself and make some moves to make that happen. Also, let us know so that we can make this space better and we can make it safer for everyone here. Fire. So fire is something that's always a possibility. I've got this fire pull down right here. There is a fire extinguisher and another pull down over there. If there's a fire, pull the fire alarm, get out of the building. Everybody else will too, okay? If there is a small fire and you put it out with your you know, soda pop uh, and it goes out and you never tell anybody and the fire marshal finds out, they will shut us down. We have to report all fires regardless of size. So please, please, please help us with that. And that's it, we'll let you know if and when you pass. Thank you for taking basic two and we look forward to seeing you around the Wilson Center.